Hello my friends, we are at Stonewall Jackson Lake today. Two things that I want to get done today. One is I want to test out the live scope. I want to see if I can get some structure and some fish and bait balls and things of that nature. And we're going to see if it was well worth the money that we put out for it. Another thing I want to try to do today is I want to try to get another muskie for this season. Mine also fished for some bass. I had a great day about two days ago at my local pond. I went out and I caught a four, four, four pounds, four ounce bass, largemouth, caught a four pound, one ounce bass, and I also caught a three pound, four ounce bass. All of those were really my biggest bass that I've ever caught out of that pond. And I caught numerous small ones as well, but those females were full of eggs and they were just, they were the biggest fish that I've ever seen out come out of that pond. So we had a, that pre-spawn bite going. It might be happening here as well. And there are some monsters in this lake. There are some huge bass in here as well as muskie. So let's get out on the water and let's hook up that live scope and see if we can't get something in the boat and get some pictures. Our first stop is Charles Fork, which is right across from Valadia boat ramp. Lady has a really nice concrete pad and plenty of parking and you can see it's just a quick jaunt over. So here's where we're going to make our first stop. Hello my friends, we are back on the water and today I'm going to try to show you how to use this live scope. I had a couple people ask me how to, how to use it so I'm going to kind of go through it right now. So right now I have it stowed away in my clips, I just untied it. You can see here's the transducer end and then down here's the top. So we're going to just pop this thing out. What we're going to do is we're going to slide it this way so you can see that right now is in the forward position because this is pointing forward. If this was pointing down, then it would be down imaging. So if I wanted to point it down, all I have to do is click it twice like that. Now it's pointing down. Now it's pointing forward. Now it has to be to the left facing forward. I realized that the last time I used it. So now we're just going to slide it in this fishing specialties. I'm going to push it to the front and now I'm just going to slide this little cover right there. So you can see that's up right there. Everything's good to go. Okay, here we have it. Right now it is on down imaging, or down view, I think is what they call it. So now we're gonna switch, we're gonna go home, and we're gonna go into our pan optics, and there it is. It looks like there's a little school of fish right there, a little bait bowl right there in front of us. And then here's a couple little fish right there. I just stopped it, let me see back. There we go. Yeah, a little crappie right there. Looks like a little school of crappie. Right there. Nice. It's about, they're in about 10 feet of water. Pretty good picture here. So I'm going to put us over by this. There's some, right over here, there's some good sticks. We're gonna head over that way and see what we can see over there. It's got a big tree right here. Really nice picture of a tree, submerged tree. Looks like a couple little fish swimming around it. Nice. Over here to the left, some little little fish, probably crappie. Here's a couple on the bottom. See them swimming around. Oh, this is so awesome. Little tiny bait fish there, probably crappie. I'd say this is a nice spot for crappie. So here I've placed a jacket over the unit so that you can see it a little bit better. And you see here to the left at about 10 feet, there's a really nice school of fish that comes up. And then here's an even bigger one there at the 20. It's about five feet, 20 feet out from you. Just a huge ball of bait coming right there. It's a really good shot. I was really excited to see that one. And then in here to the left looks like bigger fish, crappie, swimming around independently. Usually the bait bowls are real tightly compacted. And over here to the right you can see the makings of the submerged timber. As my boat kind of moves back and forth, it comes in to focus and out of focus. And 
and some independent fish, most likely crappie again, because they like to hang out at that spot there. I've seen people crappie fish in there quite a bit. And you can see right there about 14, now about 10 feet. That's a decent sized fish. Okay, so we're sitting about 18 feet of water here. Nice trees here. You see schools of crappie. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spot lock us right here. And then I'm gonna turn this to the right and you'll see what happens here on the screen. You don't even have to unlock it, you just spin it. And you can see it adjust automatically. And of course my trolling motor is trying to push me the other way. So now I'm gonna turn it kind of quickly. You can see that it recovers rather quickly. Now I'm gonna turn it to the left. There's a nice big tree, some little crappie around it. Turn it to the left again, there we recovered. Now I'm gonna point it straight ahead. That's straight out in front of us. Now I'm gonna go to the left. So essentially I'm just twisting that with my hand. There is a piece you can put on top here for a handle, but I just find it easy just to, if, normally I just keep it front, facing front, and I move my boat as I wanna go and see fish, but now I'm gonna turn this to the right so we can get over here in these trees. And I don't see any musk. I see something big there kind of at the bottom, right there. But it's hard to tell what that is. Definitely some trees there. So I think I'm gonna throw a couple baits over through there and see if I can't see it on my... All right. smaller bait I can catch some bass and then also I can catch muskie with it as well. A lot of activity there. There's my bait. There I can see it coming through. Nice. Nice skeeter boat. A lot of timber in here. It's called Charles Fork. Right across from the Valadia. I have a bite there. The lady of boat ramp. So it's just a quick little jaunt over. Alright, I'm gonna stop that. So after seeing no muskies there at Charles Fork, I decided to go on down Skin Creek to this island. I've had some really good luck here. There's some deep water and some saddle areas, and I always seem to see some muskies. I did fish that area for a while and I didn't see anything. And last fall, I saw this area over here into this little bay, so I decided to go over there and see if I can find any muskies sitting up in these timber. So I'll throw in this double aid again. I love this bay. It is, the water is so clear and this is so natural looking. This is, if there's any fish here, they gotta bite it. I'm gonna make them so pretty up through here. This is a nice little cove. Man, that wind is murder. Oh, yeah, there's so many sunken trees down through here. You can just see them on the graph. See any fish? There's some fish right there. I'm pointing over here. I am like dead into that wind. Here 
creatures that follow. Oh, he's flashed off. Let's mark it. There's a the follow. That was a nice one. It's about 36 look like. Nice, hope we'll get that on video. Kind of jerked a little too soon. I think he saw me. Oh, now I'm shaking. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm just shaking like crazy. <laughs> now I might throw back with a smaller bait. So let's do that. A lot of times you need to, if you get a follow on one bait, you throw something else. And sometimes you throw it smaller. Oh, he was good size. All right, let's throw a crankbait. Man, my legs are shaking a bit longer into the cove and didn't see any more fish so I, I was thinking about going on over to the island so I, I tootled over there and I did contact another fish and it actually came up and nipped at my tail that same double eight that I've been throwing most of the day and then it came into the into the boat and I went to my figure eight and I was like okay I'm not going to jerk it this time but he just peeled off too when he saw the boat. The water was so clear that whenever they got close to the boat, they could see me so well and they just kind of peeled off. So as far as whether or not this Panoptics is worth the money, I mean, it's $1,500 just for the unit and then you have to have at least a plus, either 93, 92, what have you. You have to have the plus unit for, for it to work and then also to be able to network. So, Probably everything told you may have three or four thousand dollars into this setup now do I think it's worth it I would definitely say it's worth it for any type of jigging that you're going to do because you can get right over top of the fish and you can jig and you can just actually sit there and watch your bait go by the fish and you know how far to go down you I mean it's just that is what this thing really excels in it's also pretty good if you want to work the bank because you can look at the bank point it towards there and as you go through the bank, you can you can see all the way to the bank. So if you're going to see structure or fish, it's, it's, it's also good to have another unit like maybe down imaging or side imaging where you can look at that and say, yeah, I can see structure there. And then as you go through, you might be able to actually even see bass or, or bigger game fish. Now for open water, that's a little bit different. Musky fishing is usually kind of more suited for open water. I mean, you are kind of throwing to structure and you can look out and try to see it. But for muskies, it's not quite great. And I think it's maybe in the summertime when you're going over top of bait fish and you can see the muskie come up underneath of it. Well, then that might be really good. And again, you're gonna have to be jigging. But for just open water throwing and throwing to cover, it's not quite great. I, I still think it helps you. I did find myself looking at the, the graph an awful lot. I, a lot more than if I was using down imaging or side imaging. Normally with side imaging or down imaging, all you're trying to do is find structure. You're not really looking for individual fish. Whereas with the panoptics, you can use that in conjunction with the side view and down view, and then it really makes a, a lethal weapon. So you can you can find the structure and then actually look for the fish. So all in all, I think it was worth it. I, I really had a, a good time using it. I'm getting better as I use it more and more as well. So I would definitely recommend it for someone that's interested. Uh, it is kind of pricey but you can find them on sale although they're trying to kind of hard to find right now because everyone's trying to get them lastly here are some videos that I shot earlier in the season so just kind of take a look at these and you can see the high detail in the down imaging with that high definition uh, transducer so there's some of the down imaging if you can see right here on the left hand side it says you're using a GCV 20 and the chirp 820 kilohertz so I guess I am getting chirp out of this from the front. I didn't think I was. There is some structure and I'm, I'm telling you the pictures are unbelievable. Look at that. I mean the detail is so crisp and clear. Unbelievable. It's really nice. 
that is really nice. There's a shot of the 2D. It is using chirp, I was surprised. Looks like a fish right there. Big one too, like a musky. Here's a shot of the side view. Really good to tell on it. It's got a really nice picture. You can see all kinds of sticks and logs and trees, stumps, I mean it is littered with it in this lake. Oh yeah, look at this one coming up right there. That's really nice. 20 feet of water here. That's a huge tree. 